Okay. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Do you hear me in the in the room? Thank you for being here for this session about Coin. Uh, I'm Arnaud Giuliani. I'm a French uh, freelance developer. Uh, I'm also the Coin lead project, and uh, we'll see about Coin project today. But before diving into source code stuff, just I will tell you about the story of Coin. And a first question that usually people ask me is why? Why are you crazy enough to try to write a new dependency injection framework? Yeah. L for this, um, let's get back in 2016. And 2016, we have the first production ready of Kotlin. And because it's production ready, I've put in production some of my apps with Kotlin that it was production ready. And now it's so easy to tell people that Kotlin clearly uh, brings you so much stuff for you, daily development stuff, that clearly, yeah, when you develop with Kotlin, you feel like a superhero. But we still use some stuff that rely on old ecosystem Java, okay? That mainly you can use Dagger, other stuff, or if you don't use uh, Android, you can make some Spring, but mainly the stuff um, is driven by the Java language. And this Java language is built on really, I would say, interesting process, uh, inti interesting concept. But with Kotlin, it makes me some kind of boring to, to use day by day. I think I'm kind of boring to use annotation, proxying, stuff like that. I think that now we can try to make something better. Perhaps the French stuff. I didn't put any gilet jaune picture then, but um, yeah, and almost you can feel that you have no need of the uh, framework when you begin to make some Kotlin stuff because you, can you have the object, you have functions, you have generics, you have delegates. You can write fun stuff, either try to begin your DI stuff by your own, but it's quite complex to assume it every day. Then I try to look at something simple for me because I like simple solution. I don't want to look at documentation. I just want to look at a simple snippet. I just want uh, to read and understand it. And simple, not in the meaning of something stupid. For me, clearly simple is clearly the key of what I'm writing every day. And this is with this that I begin to look to any kind of solution around and didn't find what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for something that clearly is oriented for my need, just my need of daily stuff, really simple stuff for writing my components, not too much oriented with driven uh, theory or just overwhelming by over feature that I don't know, uh, I don't care and uh, just don't want to use that. Just the simple stuff. And then I got the idea that finally, and the feeling that finally, when I'm writing something like that, I can clearly describe this stuff by function that describes those two components, and I have somewhere a link between those two functions. And clearly what is something that is needed here is a link to make a function calling another one and resolving the stuff, and this is the main idea of coin. To illustrate the stuff, there's the, be the better stuff to do that is to just take an example and perhaps a well-known example from the Dagger's uh, developers. Let's uh, check it together and let's see how, what is this app? Because yeah, you, you can see many posts of app and you can uh, see many uh, article about the Thermosiphon uh, example, but this is just a coffee maker, okay? This is just the first class that tried to make the coffee. And we have a pump, the Thermosiphon stuff, and we have a heater, okay, to heat the water. Not so complex. The thing is that we want to demonstrate some DI concept that uh, for, I would say, in a primary usage of coin or any DI, DI framework is just to say that we can inject components dependencies by the abstraction, by the interface, okay? 
And yeah, to try make a bit harder, we make a link between the thermosiphon and the heater because when we make the coffee, we, we want to pump the water only if it's hot, okay? Let's check that in a pure Kotlin style, okay? No DI, no framework, just Kotlin as you would write it in a pure Kotlin style. That we have the, uh, the heater interface. It's quite simple and we have on off that make the, the, the heating on off and then we can check if the heating is hot. And you will see that this is the most complex uh, class that we have here. And then when we run, we when you want when we want to write the pump here, the thermosiphon stuff, we will make uh, naturally we will use some constrictor injection stuff that we here we use the ether by interface, and then we make the pumping process, and we are checking if it's hot. Then okay, not so complex and the last one of those three classes we make constructor injection to say okay I use the pump I use the heater and I can brew my coffee yay then it's not so complex and we we need a final stuff we need a final class to bootstrap everything to run the stuff to run those components that we will declare somewhere and we need to get the coffee maker stuff and just run run it and run the process okay and here is the question, how we assemble it? Let's do this with coin. That brings an intuitive DSL to describe it, a lightweight container that think about something that run your functions, because we will use functions to describe the components. And also we will have a simple API just to let you use your instance in the most easy way as you can. To do that, we just use the coin core dependency Gradle, and here you can see that uh, it's completely agnostic. And then I can just run my example directly with Gradle and this little dependency. The first thing that you will do then is to describe a module to describe all your definitions, okay? And then I use module function and I will describe my definitions here, okay? And what I will use is mainly single or factory. That means I, I want to describe a singleton or a factory, something I want to rebuild when I has to have this instance. And mainly behind that, we will use a functional expression to build the component that we want. That means that mainly we will call constructor of, of our classes here. Let's take the example and let's describe our app just with three lines for uh, with coin okay for these three components let's start with the electric heater and then let's declare the first stuff that is a single of electric heater we declaring a single ton of electric heater okay and because coin don't want to provide any introspection stuff and just want to make explicit stuff and explicit uh, running components we have to specify here that we want to use this component has the ether interface type, okay? We have to be explicit, there's no magic. If we don't want any introspection, if we want to do clearly smoothing stuff with functional, we just run the functions and then we have to clearly give some clues to coin to resolve the stuff. The same for the time of siphon. Here we just give a uh, single of pump for the time of siphon, uh, time of siphon stuff, but the main interesting thing is that here this is directly a DSL a Kotlin DSL that means that your code is compiling directly in your in your IDE and then you will have directly the compiler saying hey there's something missing here that means that this is my class I, I said that I have a dependency then I have to give something for the for the dependency and here you have the fourth keyword that you need here this is we want we will have we will ask coin to get the instance here and because Kotlin is smart enough to guess the type, we don't need to specify any, any type that we want to resolve. And then this is how you describe components and you just resolve dependency between them. Last stuff, the last component, the coffee maker, will be the same. That it we need the two components uh, dependency resolution here and we just write in constructor the two get functions. 
you can write it in one module or in a separate modules. We don't have any import or linking stuff. We rely mainly on dynamic resol uh, resolution. And from the first version to the current state, I would say that nobody asked me to or ask in a, in a kind of way or ask to any kind of import or linking functions. People are happy with just giving the modules and running the modules. What we can do, because we are completely dynamic, is to check the configuration of our module to be sure that, yeah, everything is dynamic, but we want to be sure that the graph is, uh, is okay and we are not missing something else in the definitions. <coughs> Another stuff behind that. Once you have declared your components in the DSL, you will rely on API, and this API is also described as the coin component. And the coin component, it will be a class for you that is allowed to use the coin container. In detail, coin component is an interface, okay? You don't have to implement anything, it's just a marker for us to allow to identify a link to the a coin API for you, because you clearly see here that you have a link to the coin API. When you describe the stuff in the DSL, you don't have any link to coin. And this is one of the first, uh, the first, uh, uh, the first idea that we had uh, at the beginning of coin, is that we want to be able to just throw away coin if it's not good enough and come back to another thing. We want to be completely agnostic and have the ability to declare the components completely um, in the in independent way from uh, any framework. But this coin component interface allows us to give you those API that are inject and get. And for us then, this is the key component that let us bootstrap any kind of environment and any kind of runtime, like Kato, like Android, and give this coin component uh, feature directly to any kind of an, uh, runtime environment. And that means what? That means that here, I just need to tie my component with coin component interface, I and I can use the by inject delegate stuff, and that's it. Finally, we have to run, s run, s uh, run coin uh, from somewhere. We have to start the container, the thing that will read your definitions and allow you to resolve everything. And you just start from a main point and we just use the start coin function. And this start coin function, this is the coin two zero way of declaring your coin container. That means that here, it's a kind of small DSL to just declare the starting component that you will need to for your container and your app. And here, we just need to declare the modules. And if you have several modules, yeah, please do that. And then we have started coin. You we can run the, ins the instance of our uh, class then and resolve the stuff and make the coffee. Last thing is that if we clearly respect the exercise and we want to go to the end of the stuff, we have a lazy link here. That means that, for us, we have to make a lazy resolution of this component. And what we do here is that we rely completely of the Kotlin on the Kotlin language. We don't reinvent the wheel. And then it allows us to just have, instead of my type, my original type, have, as a, have a lazy of heater, and then use it by delegate when I want it then I don't have to use um, the some get value when I need it. This, this is just the Kotlin type of uh, the, la the lazy type here. That means that when you write stuff with coin and the DSL, we just give some clues for you to help build the stuff, but after that you have the power in your hands to write anything you want. Let's get back a bit on the Dagger version, please, because I will just give you some clues to get away from Dagger and have some uh, key stuff to migrate your app easily from Dagger to Coin. And just to refresh your memory, uh, in this app we should have a module that declare a singleton here of heater and we link to another module, the pump module here that binds the stuff and binds the other instance. 
And finally, when we want to bootstrap the, run the running components, we have to tag it like that and saying that is a singleton, and we have to import the drip coffee module. Okay. And after that, you have also to inject all your constructor to be sure that everything is injected. Here, you can also notice that we are using the dagger uh, lazy type. That means that it's not so Kotlin friendly when, when you want to make something smarter. Okay? Finally, yes, yeah, sorry, just migrate to coin. What else? How do that? Um, we will just identify the smallest components of the graph and then we will make the bridge between the two worlds step by step and then injecting in dagger components stuff from dagger uh, from coin and how we do that we will make coin component that will make the bridge uh, on the component that will need to retrieve either component from dagger and either component from coin Let's declare our heater component and in the dagger class what we will do that we will move the property as delegated by coin directly. We don't make a constructor injection here because we don't need it anymore. And also in the other class we will just make an inj a delegate injection from coin. And then from that you have the key to make in advance everything and migrate component by component and that's it you have migrated your component if you want there's a catch-up link to have the complete article here to have the full details of how we can migrate the dagger uh, thermosiphon example to coin and how we complete completely make all the graph uh, dependency being injected by coin let's check what coin brings clearly for the android platform and First of that is we can just create our activities or fragments clearly like that and we have to rely on lifecycle. But Coin will give you clearly Coin extensions for your Android components and clearly make those components as they were Coin components and thus out of the box. That means what? That means that you just have to include one Gradle dependency have to start your com your uh, co uh, your coin dependency in uh, module somewhere from your application. In the Android way, don't forget to add Android logger and Android context. That means that for uh, coin 2.0, we have to be explicit in the way that we want the stuff to be injected and reused for the starting process. Then if you miss the line Android context, you will miss to inject your Android context in the your coin DSL. And then, once you have started Coin in your main application, you just open your activity, and when you want a, de an, 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 a dependency, you just hit by inject, and that's it. You don't ha you don't have anything to do. Some uh, you don't have to do, uh, to do anything else. If you want to get then the Android context from the DSL, because this is where sometimes you need to inject the Android context. It's not good because then you are linked to Android context and it's hard to test, but then sometimes we need. What you will do is use the Android context function that will resolve the stuff for you. And this stuff, the Android context functions resolve the Android context for you, but you can also use the get resolution function that make the, the generic resolution for you. Dealing with transient components, for example, presenters, um, it's kind of easy because then we will just rely on the factoring. That means that we will ask coin to create an instance when we need it. We don't want single. We don't want to have single tools of our presenter. And then when we, he when we will have our activity that will be created at the first call, then we will ask for the injection of the presenter and then create the instance for us. And then each time you recreate, each time you uh, ask for the new presenter instance here, you. Uh, once you, del uh, you went when the activity is dropped, you ask for a new instance, and then you ask for a new instance of factory and then activity. One of the smooth stuff that we can have also is that Coin um, brings some cool stuff for the view model um, for the view model API. 
That means that we bring extensions to make your view model uh, dependency injection quite natural. That means that just now you can think about constructor injection directly in your um, in your view model class, and here the view model is the base view model from the uh, Android activity and um, Android API. And in the module, we just have to use the keyword view model to declare the components, and that's it. Then we just need to resolve anything that mean need to be resolved in the in the constructor. In the activity, instead of using by inject, I will use by view model because I have to ask Android to make to subscribe your view model instance to the factory, and we make it for you, and it's free then. Just one line, and you have constructor injection for your I activity and fragment with the view model. For the fragment, we can also have something interesting that is you can share directly your instance of the view model from the activity to the to the child fragments. And it's just done in one line here. This is kind of the same uh, co uh, API call here that, is that we rely on the parent activity uh, instance. You will see that also it's clearly easy to test with coin and then it's a good thing that everything that you write for your app, you can easily uh, play with it, mock and uh, run some kind of uh, strategy with your module. Just a line here, this is the coin test module that will help you make the, the, the testing stuff. One of the main stuff that you have to use here is the checking, is checking your modules. That means that we are clearly completely dynamic and then if you don't check your module, I will say, uh, with this mechanism, you will have to discover that sometimes, uh, you will discover if anything crash on runtime. And then to prevent from hit, um, we just run a JUnit because finally the, 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 the checks of your module is just a function, again, your uh, module's definition. And to run it, the best way is to run your definition in a JUnit check it and that's it you are checking all your definitions in one line and you have it on the C s on your ci and that's okay all your team is uh, have a secure uh, belt be uh, with that we also have some bunch of extensions to help you with the j unit and we have some coin we start coin and we have the coin test uh, interface that is a kind of coin component interface but will bring more feature oriented for the testing and here in your JUnit, you will directly use any kind of component that you declare in your modules, directly like that. It's very pleasant to use that. And also, you can declare on the fly any mock for any kind of component and declare any, you can do er anything you want then, because you will resolve your component as a mock and not as the original component uh, here from that. <laughs> okay, then. Now I will talk about um, Coin 2.0, okay? And actually, the the the, the current version, the current stable version, is 1.0.2. And since the first version, we have trying to keep very focused on something to keep a Coin really, really, uh, I would say, simple. That means that from the beginning the target was to keep the DSL as simple as that. That means four keywords, okay? That means that anything, anyone that read a coin configuration file clearly understand what it does and don't have to say, okay, this is a mechanism that do this and have to import this. No, we just write the stuff, it's explicit. And you, don't, you just have four keywords for that. The other target of coin is Keeping the pragmatic API, that means that we just focus on what global people need about this definition. And we still are very focused on the get and inject uh, function. That means that mainly all you, will do, uh, all you will do is retrieving instance by get and inject, okay? And sometimes when you have uh, miss, uh, I would say that if you miss somewhere the get or inject extension, you will use the coin component interface and tag this class and have access to coin API with that. And that's it. That was the first table version of coin. But finally, there were some contributors that 
asked us about a uh, benchmark and he was benchmarking coin with 540 definitions and then the benchmark was not very good because the yeah, injecting definition and retrieving the stuff was around 140 milliseconds. That's quite huge. And then I decided to rewrite all the internals because then we were rely uh, um, the internals were using heavily functional Kotlin and uh, the logging engine was not so good. Then finally after that I began to rewrite all the internals, keeping the same API and having a better benchmark here result. That means that, that with a definition graph of 450 definitions, when you resolve a bunch of definitions, you just resolve it in one millisecond. Sounds cool. The other stuff that can be interesting here is that we can compare the two versions of the coffee maker stuff here is that about uh, dependency injection and um, uh, I would say benchmark running against those two those two code. Okay, they see the same stuff. We will resume the same kind of components, but one side with coin and one side with dagger. Okay, and then what we want to do here is that it's um, uh, it's uh, in an app that is rerun that to avoid uh, a cold start with the JVN that we have some kind of um, uh, overhead in the two in the two version. We benchmark the stuff on the odd version that is that we already run the app like in the benchmark from Sloy. The benchmark from Sloy running run the app ten times and here we just find the app ten two times just to run the stuff. Okay, that means that we run we drop everything and we run and then. We uh, we don't have the um, the starting cost of the JVN each time, and then we have those results. That mean that here, and you can uh, replay this on your laptop, and that mean that clearly Dagger brings something that is at start. They generate everything for you, but clearly in terms of resolution, we are cl clearly close to the Dagger performance for you. And there is no magic. We have to read the definitions and prepare everything for you to resolve the stuff. But this is still something that we can admit in terms of dependency. And still with, I would say, cool start and a bit of flogging, you see that the three definitions here are resolved, are read in, be, uh, in below of one millisecond. And if we try to run 400 definitions, I'm around 12 milliseconds. Not so bad. And then be aware that this have to be taken also with your device, you with all the versions of your hardware and stuff, because we have the Kotlin overhead that can play against us sometime, but it's not so much costly. And if you have any difficulty to play with, uh, any difficulty to run modules and start, but I think that the, the, the worst case is not here. You will have the, the need of uh, performance when you resolve your definitions. If you need to 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 have better starting process, just um, then split your module at start and run and load modules when you need it. You can uh, have access to those project and uh, benchmark here and uh, yeah. Also, thanks Sloy to having uh, bootstrap the stuff and compare also all the benchmark like coding and all those stuff. Upgrading to coin two zero. Okay, then it won't be so much difficult because you have just have mainly to rewrite your start coin uh, function. Instead of in the first coin, uh, coin version stable of uh, the first stable version of coin, we provided I would say one start coin function per runtime, and we do another thing that we provide one way of starting coin, but we provide now in coin two zero, I would say extensions of the way of starting coin. Okay, that means that here in Android, don't forget to use the Android context uh, functions to reference your Android context. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Think that mainly we have merged some package from the standalone to core, and when you update from coin 1.0 to con coin 2.0, your module, your existing module, you will just have to make some re-imports mainly, and that's it. The DSL, the API, are stay the same. But we have some API breakage, of course. We have simplified the module DSL, 
uh, in the previous version, we allowed some kind of visibility rules and uh, inner module stuff with visibility access. And then we don't want to maintain this anymore because this is something that mainly people don't use and uh, make the resolution of the components clearly more complex to do. And then for the to have such be such benchmark now, we had to make some compromise. Also now we rely more on qualifiers and make some default definition resolution. That means that if you have a first definition with a type and you have another definition with the same type, you have to make the second definition with a qualifier, but the first one will be your default definition. In the old uh, version of coin, you, you will have you to make two qualifiers uh, uh, to have this resolution. The scope API is something that uh, is um, has been uh, developed at the end of the Coin 1.0 uh, version, and that was something that was hard to to bring to maturity. Now with the new engine, we are making a new way to write the scope, and uh, we try to make simple uh, usage about scope. And the last stuff that I, I would like to to say about Coin this is now oriented to let you also develop a, any app in a with some kind of isolation. That means that you can wrap any uh, framework or any uh, library and just have your internal um, uh, instance of coin and don't be uh, polluted by any usage of coin outside of, uh, of your library. If you, sorry, if you need uh, any, uh, any clues about the upgrade, there's uh, this reference upgrade coin that uh, redirects you to the official uh, coin website. Okay, uh, my remote controller is not working. Um, there's so much uh, topics I would like to share with you and there's so much stuff that I would like to talk about, but this is mainly the stuff that has been improved in coin 2.0 and we just we will just take a look at uh, the scope API and how we can bring AZ stuff for you. Yeah, just like take a look at the scope API together. And okay, what what is a scope then? A scope it's a just a context. Uh, it's a it's something that hold your definitions for fixed duration of time and when you finish with this result definition you just want to throw them away and you cannot inject those instances anyway the best thing is to try to have some kind of analogy, uh, uh, analogy to component lifetime and the 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 longest lifetime that you can have in your components is tied to the container and the container uh, is tied to the single definitions. They are never dropped. They will survive until you have to stop your uh, your coin container. When you use factory, it's some kind of snapshot and one use uh, one uh, one uh, one time use of component instance. And we need some kind of interme uh, intermediate usage, some kind of component that are not single, but component that you want to throw away at a given time. The best way to think about that is to think about boxes, okay? Think that you will bring boxes for a given time and you have to think if these boxes you want to show it directly or if you want to keep it for a certain time. That means that every single you keep the box, the factory you just throw the box away when you have to use it and the scope, you bring everything in you want in your scope boxes and then when you are finished with your scope you just throw away this box. And to give you uh, more, I would say, so, um, to, to, be, to be more close to something that you are perhaps developing with, singletories, you can have some repository or components that are surviving for, the l for a long time. But for the scope, you will need it for, for example, user session. So that means that you have to register uh, uh, user related data for a given time and when you log out you just throw this away then um, how we write that then in the module okay we have to open a scope structure definition that is scope function 
And we have to name with the qualifier, here's the qualifier function that either allow you to give a name either with a string, either with a type, that avoid you to use strings uh, if you want to use uh, more strong stuff. Then here we are, detail we are detailing a session structure and we will have scope definition inside. That means that we have a structure of the box, the session box type, okay, and we have a session data definition inside. And how we will use that is that here we want to create an instance of this box. Here, this name is session one, we give an ID. And we, we say, okay, I have my box, session one, and what I want to do is just get from this box, this box, any dependency instance that I need. And what I've done, okay, close it. Here, a good, um, some coin goodness for you to help you deal with uh, scope API day by day on the Android side is the coin Android scope uh, dependency. This dependency is included with the coin uh, Android view model dependency. And what this stuff brings is that it brings extension function f uh, oriented for Android lifecycle to bring you to bridge with you for the coin scope API. In clear we will make a scope for an activity, and that means that here I make a structure of scope for my activity here. And clearly, I want to have some scope component like a presenter or other stuff that can survive for the duration of the life cycle of my activity. And then how I will use that in my activity, I will have a current scope extension uh, property that will be is uh, bring magically by coin here and this current scope it's um, a scope that is automatically created at the beginning of your activity and drop at the end of the life cycle and that you don't have to do anything the scope is created for you you just have to dig into the definitions stuff that you need here and that's it um yeah just to finish that finally the current scope is an extension of the api I hope you had to learn interesting thing and uh, finally to give some takeaways for the newcomers on coin before starting coin okay what you can do is that you can try the getting started project and this getting getting started project is a bunch of github project that you can just clone use this really small example and then you can play with uh, Android, Android model, uh, Android scope, Android view model, and it's a little program to allow you to play easily with very small API. We have quick references uh, on online to have, uh, I would say, a quick answer for you about the API, but about the daily usage of coin. And after that, my advice is that coin is oriented to be simple write simple things with that and make it step by step that means that try to make simple components write it step by step and check your modules okay it's a good uh, uh, a good habit to have and because this is the safety net for you and you will have some bunch of modules and bunch of uh, definitions don't be afraid to use the check module definition one of the best feedback that we have on coin is that people saying that finally they discover that they can write things sim in a simpler way and they also review their uh, their architecture their components and they make it clearly so in a in a more uh, easy way as before and this is the main s the main message keep everything simple as possible and also with cop don't try to use uh directly the scope API, try to challenge yourself about the, about the lifetime of your components. Do my app is just running it with all the stuff all the time and you can just start on stop and restart coin or just have to have complex strategy with scope and have um, then custom uh, scope oriented dependency injection. We have documentation reference, uh, how to maintain, I think this is the hardest part of the open source project, is to keep documentation reference up to date, but 
uh, you can contribute uh, and you can help us maintain all the stuff. Uh, you can have the reference of everything, the API, the javadoc, everything, and all is on GitHub from the website documentation to all the documentation and all the project. And if anything goes wrong, you can directly go on Stack Overflow, GitHub, and Slack. And on Slack, we are on the Kotlin Slack uh, instance, and you, uh, we are on the coin channel, easy to find. You can follow us on Twitter. We can uh, also have the coin developer channel on Medium that uh, publish all the change log and some main articles about people. And the main stuff is that clearly it's important to have your feedback. And now uh, coin has been starting in 2017. The project which is now reaching 3,400 stars on GitHub. It's quite cool. And then um, I want to thank all the early adopters, all the first people that believe in the project and continue to contribute and continue and help the community to, to, to grow. One last takeaway for you is the website inside coin.io. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, how much time do we have? Perhaps one minute, or I can. I will be outside also to answer any question. About sorry, about testing. testing. Yeah. No, no. The the the, the API is the same, and uh, mainly the coin two zero bring new internal uh, new internal stuff and the new scope and the and the context isolation. Yeah. Uh, first, yeah. Yeah. Just use the coin core and the coin core dependency. Yeah. I think that. Um, uh, depending, uh, it's not something. I think that you won't survive to screen rotation like view model. It's a kind of intermediate view model stuff that you that you can make with the presenter, because I think that you destroy the activity and then we have a on destroy event, and then because we have the on destroy event, we just close the scope for you. But uh, if you don't, if you don't, if you just apply a new activity behind your activity, then you don't lose the scope because the your activity is not uh, is not closed. Yeah, one last. Yeah. No, not at, uh, not at compile time. Just at runtime. And if you use the check modules, you will have an error here saying that you forget to provide something with this type. Okay, thank you very much.